Hey folks, welcome to part 18 of the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam Series. Our first question is gonna be, what is the primary function of bins in Tableau? It is to group data into equal intervals, to filter out unwanted data, to organize data hierarchically, or to classify qualitative data. Which of these would be the primary function of bins in Tableau. For this, let's head on over to Tableau. And uh, what we're looking at here obviously is the sample superstore data set. And we're looking at the sum of sales in a horizontal bar chart format, right? So I have 2.36 total sales as you can see here. Now, if I wanted to create a bin for something like uh, quantity, I can right click on quantity, which by the way is a measure. And then I can go to create, I can go to bins and you'll notice first you can type you can type in a name and then you have to specify the size of the bin right so all of these bins essentially will have the same size so by default it's going to you know specify uh, or suggest a bin size like 1.77 based on the underlying values um, but you do have the option of typing it in you have the option of driving it using a parameter um, but let's say I want to choose two, right? So I'm going to I'm going to choose two and click OK. And by the way, what this means is, um, of the uh, quantity fields, the lowest value you have is one, the highest you have is 14. So the highest uh, possible value for any quantity, uh, you know, of the sales would be 14. So if I click OK, what it's going to do is going to it's going to basically uh, split up the quantities into discrete intervals of equal size. So now that I have a bin called quantity, I can drag that to rows and notice first of all, right, just wanna make, the, make, make sure and validate this. If I highlight all of these, again, my total is still 2.326 million. So I'm looking at the same data. The only thing that's different now is now it's bucketed into these different quantity sizes. So if I had an order uh, of, of quantity zero to two in terms of quantity, these are the sales that would be attributed to that. So long story short, right, this longest one that you see here, the 751,000 um, sales number, what this is saying is most of my sales came from orders that had a uh, quantity between four and six, essentially. That's what this is doing here. It's bucketing, uh, essentially bucketing uh, all of those orders that had a quantity between four and six. After that, that would go six to eight, eight to 10, and so on and so forth. So what is that doing here? It is grouping data into equal intervals, right? They can't be different. You can't have like zero to one, then like two to 10. It, they all have to be stepping by the same increment. So over here, all the differences are gonna be two, zero to two, two to four, four to six, six to eight, so on and so forth. Um, so, so far the first option here does look to be the correct solution. Does it filter out unwanted data? No, we did not use um, this whatsoever to help us filter it. It's really just to, um, you know, in terms of analysis, be able to identify uh, using bids. So not to filter data. Third option is to uh, organize data hierarchically. We didn't employ any kind of hierarchy here. In fact, you would have to use something like this with the product hierarchy, um, and then you'd be able to drill down, roll up, et cetera, as we discussed in the prior video. So that's not gonna be the correct solution. Last option is to uh, classify qualitative data. Well, this isn't really um, qualitative data. Uh, I guess you could say it is, but if, if I really wanted to uh, classify qualitative data, I would use something um, like maybe the, the subcategory or the manufacturer here or the product name, which uh, the manufacturers are actually already a group. But what I'm getting at is for something like product name, if I wanted to classify those, I can create a group, not a bin, but a group. And let's say these top four, I wanted to classify as a particular group. I can go ahead and do that here using groups. So that's not gonna be the correct solution here. The only solution here is gonna be that first option. By the way, if you do enjoy videos like this, consider liking the video and subscribing for more content just like this. Next question, what role does custom SQL play in Tableau? Does it allow users to write their own SQL queries for data sources? Does it automate data transformations, provide templates for common queries, or enhance data security? This one should be pretty straightforward. Hopefully you know the answer, but we're gonna seek some help from the Tableau documentation. This one talks about connecting to a custom SQL query. As you can see here, um, you know, when you are on the data source uh, tab of Tableau, you have a number of different options. I mean, you can connect to a file, you can connect to a database, and when you connect to a database or file, as we'll see here, 
you have you know the logical layer then you go in and you, you have the physical layer and you can actually drag and drop these different tables in to um to perform a join and then you have different ways to filter you can you know uh, filter at the extract level, uh, level uh, the data source level um, really at the sheet level there's a number of different levels where you can actually filter data but if you maybe uh, were more fluent in SQL or you had a good reason to want to use SQL maybe the logic is uh, very very complex and it's not something that you can easily mimic in Tableau then you might want to use the custom SQL query function. And what that is, is it's basically gonna, you're gonna see this button here, the new custom SQL, when you're connected to a database. So over here, I'm not connected to a database, that's why you don't see that. But when you are, and we did cover this on, on the last video, um, you should be able to basically type in the syntax to generate the, you know, the results that you're looking for using a custom SQL query. So just as you would in like uh, MySQL Workbench or SQL Server um, Management Studio, you can type in the query, you can perform your join, you can do any kind of filtering, row functions, what have you. Um, and that's what's going to be brought into Tableau. So if you wanted to maybe pre-process that way in the query itself, so that Tableau had to do less of the heavy lifting, that would be um, one scenario where, where you would want to use uh, a custom SQL query. So that's what it's for. So does it allow users to write their own SQL queries for data sources? Yes, because all your, the query that you built it's going to be querying, uh, querying the data source. All that calculation is going to be happening at the data source level. It's not like every single sheet within your workbook is going to be mirroring that logic. The data source itself will provide you the query that you're seeking, uh, essentially. So the first one here does look to be the correct solution. Does it automate data transformations? Well, we're not automating uh, anything by doing so. Um, so that's not going to be the correct solution here. If you did want to, you know, in a sense, automate something, you'd probably want to use something like a Tableau Prep Builder. Or if you did have a custom SQL query and you had like an extract refresh, in a sense, that would be automating it. But you're not really transforming data. You're just manipulating data using uh, using SQL or SQL. So um, that's not going to be the correct solution. Third option is it provides templates for common queries. Now we're not doing anything like that. Last option, does it enhance data security? This has nothing to do with data security. Um, so really the first solution here is going to be the correct solution. Next question, what advantage does subscription provide in Tableau Server? Does it automate report delivery? Does it provide uh, real-time data updates? Does it enhance security features? Or is it for uh, automa uh, automated license renewals? What does subscription refer to? So again, I'll just refer to the Tableau documentation. If you've been working with Tableau for a while, you, sh you should absolutely know the answer by now. Um, but specifically subscriptions email you an image or PDF snapshot of a view or workbook at regular intervals without requiring you to sign in the Tableau Cloud or Tableau Server. So what does that do essentially? You can basically schedule um, report. If you have a dashboard that is published on Tableau Server or Tableau Cloud, um, you can actually set up subscriptions that go out to a, a particular recipient that's uh, set up on Tableau Cloud or Server and have them get an email of your dashboard or worksheet. Um, you could even uh, go to the extent of making it conditional if you want it to some extent. Like there are some options where if the view is blank, then don't send it. Otherwise, do send it, things of that nature. But it is essentially to automate report delivery. And you can, you know, based on a schedule, you can have it sent daily, hourly, once a week, once a month, what have you. So very customizable there. Does it provide re uh, real-time data updates? No, it does not. That's more of like a live connection within Tableau. Um, does it enhance security features? Again, nothing to do with security. Does it automate license renewals? Not in that context, right? So it has nothing to do with license renewals when you're talking about subscriptions on a Tableau server. All we're talking about here is automated report delivery. Next question, which Tableau desktop functionality allows you to recover back to your last save changes? Is it going to be rollback, version history, revert, or restore? Keyword, Tableau desktop, right? We're talking about Tableau desktop, not Tableau server. So if you wanted to go back to your last save changes, what would you do? So going back into Tableau here, let's say I had a, a save workbook that I just opened and then I made, you know, a bunch of different changes. I brought some other fields here and now I want to undo what I did. What would I do to go back? And of course you could use the undo button here 
You could maybe close out, not save this and reopen it. Um, but what, el what else you could do is if you go to file over here, there's actually an option to revert to saved. And what that's gonna do is any changes that you made and didn't save and you click this revert to save button, it's gonna go back to what the workbook was. Um, probably don't need to use this a whole lot, but um, it is something that, that can come up. So um, is it rollback version history revert? For this, we did use revert, right? So we went over here, we went to file, and we said revert to save. So, so of these options, is it gonna be rollback, version history, revert, or restore? Well, rollback is more of like a, a database uh, term when you commit or rollback, that's not gonna be the correct solution. Version history, again, not something um, that's used in Tableau. Even within Tableau Server, it would be called, I believe, revision history or something along those lines. Uh, revert would be the correct solution when talking about Tableau Desktop, as we just saw here. And restore, again, you use uh, restore, you would see in Tableau Server, not Tableau Desktop. So when you're on that actual revision history screen, you're able to restore to a previous version. But because we're talking about Tableau Desktop here and uh, recovering back to your last save changes, uh, the only correct solution here will be revert. Quick pause. If you like these videos, but you're serious about acing the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam or Certification, I've got news for you. Check out the link in the description if you're interested in practicing with an even more realistic set of practice exam questions. There are at least five different practice exams, 45 questions each, with the proper distribution of exam topic areas. You'll know exactly which questions you got right or wrong and what the correct solutions were. Now, there are a limited number of spots available so be sure to take advantage of the limited time offer because as you know practice makes perfect and that's a wrap thank you guys so much for watching as always be sure to like the video if you haven't already be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and of course as always i will catch you on the next one thank you for watching yeah.